This time I'll ask Randy Lukasevich to come forward. Yes, I need to keep it short. Uh, I just uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here to uh, tell you about a friend of mine. And uh, it will be short because uh, most of the people in the West Wall are from Omaha, and they know I don't know a whole lot about baseball, for one thing. Number two, Larry B.S., uh, Big Stick, Bornschlegel, did say if I don't keep it short in 15 minutes, he won't invite me back next year. And uh, the other reason is, how can you pack 70 years of baseball into uh, a few minutes? And uh, that's basically the story in the life of uh, John Stella. And uh, most of what's in the little capsule here does describe his life. But just a few things about him is that I grew up in a small town, 150 people. And I can echo the comments made of small town baseball, because I grew up catching foul balls and remembering the sound of steel cleats and wooden bats. And it's, uh, it, it did something to me that I really didn't know what. And uh, <clears throat> I found a picture of my uh, grandfather. It's downstairs, but I named everyone in that picture. Well, it turned out that uh, 30 years later, it's kind of making sense because one of those other guys is an inductee downstairs, Howard Waltman. And a couple of his sons are here tonight. But uh, interesting, 30 years later, in June of 2007, I was looking through the whole World Herald. And, uh, there's an article, actually this is it right here, S for South O stands for Stella. And when I saw the article, I said, I need to meet this guy. And uh, strangely enough, about two, three days later, I was in South Omaha at Louis restaurant walking up to the door, and there was a gray-haired gentleman with a mustache that looked like the guy in the picture. And I just walked right up and I says, I introduced myself, I'm Randy with the and he said, are you related to Luke? And uh, my jaw dropped because I have a long Polish name. No one can pronounce it except he did. Well, it turned out that he played baseball with my cousin at Omaha University. So uh, I guess it's kind of from that moment on where, you know, I got it. He introduced me to a whole new life of baseball that's uh, unbelievable. And uh, I got to remind me of uh, Lou Gehrig's phrase, I consider myself the luckiest man on earth. And I think it, uh, there's truth to that. There's truth in baseball. There's truth in, you know, if Latin's universal language, baseball is the second most universal language. And uh, so, uh, you know, I can't wrap up 70 years of baseball. Uh, John has touched lives, young and old, most memorable this summer, in co-working with some friends to do the Brown Park dedication of World War II baseball players that were killed in World War II. And uh, the plaque hung at Rosenblatt. It was destined for who knows where, but right now it's at Brown Park and it's honoring 40 young boys uh, whose families had no idea what happened to this plaque. So uh, that's been a great, uh, great tribute to John. And um, there's not a whole else I want to say except. The other thing that's made so much sense is that Walt Whitman wrapped it up pretty well, too. Uh, we can appreciate, we just never know, sometimes when we're on the field, the impact we make on the outfield to the fans and stuff. But um, there's always the stats, the home runs, the outs, the strikeouts. But uh, Walt Whitman said baseball will take us out of doors, relieve us of stress, take away our fears, repair our losses, and be a blessing. And I think because of that, we're all here. And uh, I thank the board for this wonderful evening. And I am so grateful to have the opportunity to introduce John Stella. This is John Stella. considering me for this honor, great honor, Nebraska Baseball Hall of Fame. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? Yeah. 
And I'd like to uh, congratulate the other inductees tonight. Great honor. Nice to meet you guys. And I think uh, the Spomberg kid, I think I coached against his father, Steve uh, Carney. The first time was in 1982. Great guy, Steve. Does a great job. And Coach Fagler, one of the finest. But now, right now, I have to introduce a bunch of people here. I got my whole family here. There's 17 of them over there. Uh, my daughter, I have to introduce her first or she won't cook for me anymore. Uh, my son Tony, son John, son Joe, all their families. And I thank them for putting up with me over the years. I was never around that much. Had to go to the ballpark. Now another group of people, we uh, rented a bus to come down here from South Omaha. <laughs> and there's some great names on this group, guys. There's uh, Dave Van Meter, who's responsible for renovating many parks in Omaha. They should probably name about five or six parks after him. Great job that Dave does for us. Uh, another guy, uh, Subian Zaldo's here. He's a former mayor of Omaha, former city councilman, a fine supporter of our program. Uh, Steve Chalovich is here. Maybe some of you people know. In North Omaha, they call him Kavlovich, and in South Omaha, they call him Chalovich. <laughs> so I don't know what his name is. I went to high school with him, but uh, we used to call him Charlie in high school. But great guy. He's a he does a lot for South Omaha. The mayor of South Omaha actually does a fine job. Uh, another guy, uh, Charlie Bruno, he's an a electrical inspector. Now, if you ever need anything inspected electrically, call him, and if you pay him enough, you'll get the job uh, approved. <laughs> You have to excuse me, i got to put these glasses on. You know, I wanted to be an umpire, but they said my eyesight was too good. So uh, now that I have glasses I have to wear, they said I qualify to be an ump. And if I ever get those bifocals, I can be the chief ump. Sorry, Mike. Another guy on the bus is Jim Zach from the South Omaha American Legion Club. He's responsible for sponsoring us for many years. South High has been, or the Legion Club has been the sponsor of American Legion Ball since 1925, when they first founded baseball, up in Millbank, South Dakota. So we thank Jim Zach for all his hard work. And his wife, Denise, is here also. And he told me the best thing she made for supper was reservations. <laughs> So uh, Buddy Hunter's here, he's a member of the Hall of Fame, and his brother Jeff. And uh, I played ball for their father in my first year of Legion Baseball, 1951. Their father was my coach, Harold Hunter. And uh, he was a Brooklyn uh, scout, and his father was a Brooklyn scout. And I don't know where he went wrong, but those two guys both signed with Boston. I can't believe it. <laughs> The Yankees did let him win a World Series a couple years ago. That's enough for the until the next hundred years. <laughs> I have to mention Bob Harold. He's a member of this uh, hall, and uh, I played against his father, who turned up 100 years old last year, and he's still going strong. And he could probably still go out and play, but I think he still hunts. Unbelievable. Stay out of his way. <laughs> All right, we have a group of guys called the Brown Park Ground Crew. Now, we're all volunteers down at the park. And the lead guy is Bill Mulligan. He's the head coach at South High School now. It's in, in his second year, and he's going to turn that program around. 
and uh, he played for Nebraska University under Coach Sanders. And then from there, he signed with the Kansas City Royals, played about three years. So he's a good man to have on board. Uh, Mike Metz, he's a member of this Hall of Fame here. Great ball player, played at Omaha University. Outstanding, he's one of our workers. I'd make a good on, wouldn't I? Ron Gradoville, he was a catcher for Creighton University, and then he moved to the dark side. He became an umpire. <laughs> but he umpired a lot of Big 8 and Big 12 baseball games, so he's a great guy to have on our side also. Chris Pajenski, ball player at Central High, he helps us. He's our mechanic. He knows how to do everything at the park. So we love dirt. They call him dirt. He works in the cemetery. I hope I didn't forget anybody. But uh, Randy, um, he told you a little story about the plaque, the World War II plaque. I think I need these in my the, They built a new stadium in Omaha called Municipal Stadium, 1948. And uh, they wanted to dedicate the stadium, so Richie Ashburn brought some big league ball players to Omaha to play the Omaha All Stars. And I was there. I was 13 years old, 1948. Went to the game. They also installed a plaque honoring 40 amateur ball players that lost their life during the Second World War. So de they dedicated that at Municipal Stadium also. The municipal Stadium became Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium later. Well, this plaque hung, at, hang, hung in the concourse for about 50 years. And then they renovated it. And they took the plaque down. They never put the plaque back up. I don't know if that was the city of Omaha's decision or, or whose decision. But uh, Jesse Cuevas, had, he's the groundskeeper at Rosenblatt. He kept it in his office for 15 years. Then they decided to close the stadium. And uh, he didn't know what to do with the plaque. So he called us at Brown Park wanted to know if we wanted it down there. So we installed it at Brown Park. And Steve Chalovich organized a nice event. And August 14th, we, uh, we put on a nice ceremony. About 600 family members and friends of those veterans showed up for that ceremony. And uh, some of those Nebraska All-Stars that were here tonight, the All-State team, they were down there. And uh, it was a real nice ceremony, honoring our veterans. You know, the veterans, they gave their life during the war so we could be free. And they gave their life so we could play baseball. Now, I don't know if Omaha wanted to forget those guys, but we will not forget them at Brown Park. Thank you. That's all I have.